just a couple of notes to say that this uh, recording will also be live streamed to the Proxy University uh, Facebook page. Um, but as you are with us on Zoom today, there is a QA and a uh, section. So if you have questions as we go through, uh, one of us from the team would be able to answer those. You'll also find the chat section where you can write to the panelists uh, or indeed to everybody to ask a question there as well. So please feel free if something comes up as we go through uh, or you'd like clarification to ask, and we'll try and make sure that we get to that either as we go through the presentation um, or indeed at the end, uh, as there's time time for questions. So a few more people are just joining us. Thank you very much. Welcome. It's nice to see you all here this afternoon. We'll just start setting up with the live stream, and then we'll be we'll get started with the presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Natasha, and I'm the head of admissions at Prague City University, and I'm delighted to be joined today by my colleagues, Alice, Alexa, and Anna. We will be delivering you a presentation today to give you further insight into our university, our programs, the student experience, and hopefully address any questions that you might have about the application process, and indeed what it's like to study with us. So, um, in this first section, hopefully as you're all joining us here today, you already know a little bit about Prague City University, but I'd like to give you a general introduction. Uh, so first of all, we are offering both British and Czech degrees and diplomas. So Alice, Alexa and Anna will go into more detail about our four schools, which is the School of Art and Design, the School of Business, School of Media and IT and School of Education, uh, and talk to you in a little bit more detail about the qualifications that we offer. We are offering qualifications at all levels, so through from foundation up until masters and professional qualifications as well. So regardless of what you're looking for, we should be able to offer you and find the right fit and program uh, that will suit and meet your needs. The thing that makes our university quite special is our international environment and the community feel that we offer um, to all of our students. So we have many students who join us uh, locally from who are already based in the Czech Republic and are Czech citizens, um, but we have many students who choose Prague City University as their study abroad destination. So they travel from uh, within Europe and indeed from around the world to come and study with us either for their bachelor's degree, if it's perhaps their first program, or for further study as well. So that makes for um, quite an unusual and unique environment, we believe, because although the common language is English, you can find students from all around the world that our graduates tell us um, really helps them on the employment market because they're already used to a multicultural environment. And it's something that I think people really take away as an exciting opportunity to be able to meet people um, from all around the world through their studies and gain that insight uh, and different perspectives on life as well, not only education. So in terms of our approach to teaching, um, we have very small class sizes across all of our programs. So you can typically expect to be with around 10 to 20 students, depending on your uh, program choice. And what that means is we really have a personal approach to teaching and learning. So you will get to know your um, lecturers, you will also know your peers, and rather than you know an exam-based style uh, way of assessment, it's very much feedback-driven as well and very much practically and career-orientated. So you'll hear a little bit more in detail how that works within each of the schools, um, but you can certainly expect to learn uh, not only about kind of key theoretical concepts, but also about how this can be applied uh, in the workplace, and that's all supported by academic research. 
as well. So the lecturers that will be uh, teaching you typically have not only their teaching experience in that research background, but some also from the world of practice as well to really complement your studies and enable professional progression, which is what most of our students who come with us are looking for uh, a successful global career in the future. So you'll hear a little bit more now about our schools and our degrees and diplomas, but if you are studying on uh, one of the British degrees that we offer, then even though you would be studying in Prague, your final degree award at the bachelor's and master's level would come from Teesside University in the UK. So we will make sure that it's clear as we uh, go through our programmes, which are British programmes and which are our Czech degrees, just to add that clarification there. So you know, depending on your programme of interest, uh, which degree award you would receive at the end of it. So that's a very uh, brief introduction uh, just to who we are in our environment. And now I'd like to hand over uh, to Anna, I believe, to introduce our first school. Thank you and hello to everyone. Um, our School of Art and Design um, offers two master's degree programs, two bachelor de bachelor's degree programs and one foundation diploma. Uh, these programs are all culminating into a final exhibition where students um, display their work in a public setting. So you are going actually to see some of the final uh, student work captured um, in the video in, um, in a little bit. And the first program I would like to um, talk about is the bachelor degree uh, in graphic design, which is a British um, accredited program. Um, it is a practical studio-based um, studio program uh, which encourages independent learning and problem-solving approach. Um, students on this program develop their skills in typography, uh, corporate identity design, web or editorial design, packaging, motion graphics and other areas of the graphic design field. Um, over the course of the study, students um, obviously become uh, fa fully familiar with um, the graphic design softwares such as um, the Adobe Suite, um, but maybe it's also important to say that um, this is not a um, purely skill-based program, a technical program. Um, students are also taught um, to think critically about design. Uh, they are taught um, to reflect on how design can shape um, the society. So there is this social element um, as part um, of, your, um, of your studies there. Um, graphic design students are engaging in a real client work, um, especially in uh, the second and then third year. For example, last year, um, our second year graphic design students had the opportunity to create um, a book cover layout and a promotional video to a Czech publishing company, uh, Nakladatelství Akropolis. Um, and the company chose uh, one of the student designs, um, one of the book covers, and they used it. Uh, so it was a Syrian novel, which is now distributed in the, uh, in the bookstores. Uh, so that's just one example of, um, of a real project that students had an opportunity to, um, to cooperate on. Um, and um, the second uh, bachelor's degree that um, we offer at School of Art and Design is Fine Art Experimental Media, which is um, equally studio-based program. Uh, which uh, prepares students to become professional artists. Students on this program um, learn how to express their ideas through different kinds of media while not focusing on a single one. So the idea is more about um, integrating um, the traditional techniques uh, with the new media such as um, animation, video, um, or sound. Um, as a student on this program, you gain technical skills um, such as coding for websites um, and applications um, and video or video and sound editing and uh, production. 
but you would also have a chance to learn more, more about the art history, uh, the art theory, and also about the professional development for artists. So um, students are um, taught how to describe and curate their own work, um, how to apply for a grant, for example, or how to manage, manage a budget for an exhibition. So um, as I already mentioned, um, the culmination of this program is, um, is a big moment, is a final exhibition um, that students um, are preparing for the whole third year in their own studio space. You can actually now see a footage that, um, that captures um, some of the final um, student work in progress. Um, for both of these programs, um, the portfolio is needed as part of your application. Um, however, if you're thinking about going um, in the direction of art and design or media and you don't have a portfolio yet, we do also offer a foundation diploma in art, design and media practice, which you are welcome to apply for. And we don't require a portfolio for this program. Um, as, as a graduate from the bachelor's programs, uh, you have an option to progress onto uh, the master level if you wish to further your skills, uh, dedicate time to the research and get more um, studio practice. And we can continue with the, with the next school. Um, that will be for Alexa, I think. Mm -hmm. yep, it's me. <laughs> Thank you. So um, in our School of Business, we have two master's degrees, two bachelor's degrees, and one foundation diploma in business. So the foundation diploma in business is a really great starting point if you're not quite sure um, which area of business you're looking to study if you need more experience studying in English because you want to practice in this British system, um, or if you need additional qualifications before entering into a bachelor's degree, this is a really great starting point. So it kind of gives you an overview of, of what you might kind of delve deeper into in the bachelor's programs and help get a better feel of what the British system might be like. The International Finance and Business Accounting Program is really focused more on this accounting side of business. So if you're looking to work as an accountant or finance department of, um, of an organization, this might be a good first step. Um, you'll focus on um, business fintech systems, different economics and strategy courses, and international finance in different global settings. Um, so it's really great if you're looking more specifically for those areas. The International Management Bachelor's Program gives you a more, um, more complete overview of different areas that you can go into. So if you're looking at kind of beginner or middle level management, um, HR departments, then this would be the program for you. Um, you'll focus more on global trade, working in a global business environment, um, business law and ethics, and things of that nature. Both programs are for three years, and these are under the British accredited system. So you would get the diploma from our partner, Teesside University. Then our Master's in Leadership and Strategic Management program, it is offered in the intensive format only. So it would take 12 to 18 months to complete, depending on when you submit your dissertation. Um, it's also only offered through the global blended format. So this means you can stay where you are, you would study through our digital campus and be able to work alongside your studies. So this is what we call a industry integrated program. So you should have at least two years of work experience and ideally be currently working. Um, a lot of the things that you'll be doing in the program will be related to work experience and things that you've actually had to deal with in, in your organizations. So it is important that you do have that work experience for this program. Um, and it's really ideal for professionals looking for higher level management, sitting on boards of organizations and kind of building your career from there. 
And then our master's in international management program can be completed in either the intensive format or the standard format. So you can complete it in either one year or in two years, depending on what's best for you and kind of what you're looking for in, in your studies. Um, this can also be done through the global blended format or in person. So again, depending on your situation and what you're looking for, we can, you can contact your admissions advisor to see what might be best for you. So with this program, it's actually open to all previous studies. So whether you have backgrounds in, in business or psychology or law or music, really anything. So uh, we're welcome. We welcome all students to apply. So for example, if you did your bachelor's in our school of art and design, you're welcome to apply for this program and get kind of this art and business kind of combination. Um, so this program will really help you prepare to work in international settings. Um, you'll look at intercultural relationships in the workplace and kind of help you to become a more globally minded manager. And we also do offer um, tuition towards ACCA and SEMA qualifications. So as a part of your studies, you'll actually gain some exemptions towards both of these so that if you do decide to pursue these qualifications after you finish, you'll actually be able to start a little bit ahead. So it's a nice bonus for you. And if you did decide to kind of pursue those, then you can take these classes through us and prepare you for those examinations. And the, the programs at the bachelor's level are also offered through the blended learning format. So if you are interested in learning more, you can talk to your admissions advisor to see if that format might, might be best for you. So um, our School of Media and IT um, offers two bachelor's degrees and one master's degree, which are all British accredited. Um, the first bachelor's degree that we offer is in creative media production, uh, where students become experienced storytellers with innovative and complex narrative and create engaging content for different platforms uh, and audiences. Uh, during your studies, you will develop a wide range of uh, skills such as technical skills, so shooting, recording, sound and video editing. Um, so it is basically a 360 degrees approach to content creation. Um, there are also interpersonal skills um, such as communication, negotiation, collaboration and leadership. And there is also a social element to this program as we encourage our students to be socially aware. So they work with underrepresented groups of society and create projects to make their message heard. It is also a very practical program as I would say 80 to 90% is all practice. Um, the second bachelor's uh, degree that we offer, it is in computing, uh, and it can be approached via two paths. There is multimedia path, which concentrates on digital media, 3D modeling, and game design. And then there is cybersecurity, which covers network security and secure application development. Uh, the master's degree that we offer is in computing, and it is for those students who would like to develop their skills at the highest level, and it can be completed in intensive format, which as you can see is 12 to 18 months, or standard format, which is 24 to 30 months. So the last school um, we would like to present is School of Education. Um, our School of Education prepares students um, to be professional educators. And the approach is based on a combination of theory and practice. Um, it is important to say that School of Education offers Czech accredited um, programs, meaning they are these programs are accredited in the Czech Republic by Czech authorities. Um, the bachelor program uh, we are offering is um, Bachelor in Specialized Education, teaching English as a foreign language accredited in the Czech Republic. 
Um, as part of uh, the program, students uh, further their English skills um, to a deeper level, um, to C1 or C2, depending on uh, their level um, upon entry. Um, students focus um, on the educational, psychological and linguistic uh, aspects of teacher training. And additionally, and um, this is um, the key component of the program, students undergo an extensive teaching practice. Um, the teaching practice um, take, uh, takes place in small groups and includes immediate personal feedback. Um, students complete a total of uh, 480 hours of uh, pedagogical practice as part of this program. Um, on, uh, as a student on this program, you have the opportunity to earn advanced credit and eventually obtain the prestigious uh, Cambridge CELTA certificate, which qualifies its holder to teach English to adults um, anywhere uh, in the world. And um, it, it is important to say that this program is currently delivered um, both in English and in Czech. But we are currently um, preparing to open an English pathway from September 2022 for English um, speakers only. At School of Education, we also um, offer a Czech professional qualification uh, teaching English at Czech secondary school, schools. Um, this is a three uh, semesters uh, program that is suitable for um, Czech speakers who have completed a master's degree in a non-teaching spe specialization and who have eventually decided um, to teach English um, at Czech schools and they need a qualification for it. Um, so this is a three semesters professional um, qualification um, for, uh, for teachers. Um, tuition on these programs is um, in English and uh, in Czech. On the bachelor degree, um, higher you get in the program than more English you will have. And as I mentioned already, um, for English speakers, we are preparing to open this program uh, for um, September 2022 um, admission. And in addition to your studies, we also have a speaker series in each school. So our master's speaker series is our School of Business. Our Media Innovation and Technology series is our School of Media and IT. Our Visiting Artist and Lecture series is our School of Art and Design. And then our Excellence in Learning and Teacher series is our School of Education. So over the last couple of years, we've actually been able to invite speakers from all over the world, um, and not only from Prague and the rest of the Czech Republic. So um, we've had lecturers from the UK, from Australia, from the US, and have really had a chance to, to broaden the types of speakers that we can get to, to kind of help with our student learning. Um, during these series, these speakers will talk about their areas of expertise and our students have the opportunity to ask questions and kind of network with, with people from different areas. So if you're, you know, you're a student in our School of Media and IT, you're still welcome to attend all of the speaker series and not only your school. So it gives you a chance to kind of learn outside of, of your area of study. We also have a variety of uh, student events and a very active student life. So we have art exhibitions and performances throughout the year. So not only just those final exhibitions, um, our students kind of can put together pop-up shows throughout the year that you can attend. We have a variety of student societies. And so we currently have a few on. So our Clay Society is our newest. It was just created last year. Um, we have a music society, um, our gaming society, a design society, and uh, our film society, and art and reading. So as you can see, there are so many different types for, for every in interest. Um, and if there's something that you're 
you're you don't see on there yet, um, you're also welcome to create your own. So if you know you want, um, if you're really into a certain sport, like for example, we're help, happy to help you create something that, um, that you can call your own and invite other students to join you in what you like to do. Um, our student council is also very active. So they put on events throughout the year for our students. Um, and you can also, um, join them. So if you're interested in sitting on the student council board, you can run for those elections during the year as well. Um, we have a student run magazine, our Agora magazine. So um, I think maybe two years ago, the student came through during their admission. Uh, they were really interested in starting this. And so after they joined, they, they did. So, you know, this is a really great opportunity for for students to get involved. So if you're looking to write articles or take photos or kind of be a part of this student magazine, um, you can join that as well. Uh, we have a variety of social and community events, and including our annual theme, um, which is this last year was Be the Change. So we've created some events throughout the year that kind of circle around this annual theme and, and kind of keep us all on the same, um, same mindset and thought and focus for that year. Um, we also have our new PCU Explore. So um, we plan trips around both Prague, Czech Republic, and also abroad. Um, our students get to go to some galleries, for example. Um, they've gone to Berlin and Dresden, Vienna, and Venice. Um, so you kind of, our, our graphic design students in particular, to kind of understand more, um, more areas of of um, art and different galleries and things like that. Um, they also put together some walking and cycling and architecture walks throughout the city to kind of get to know Prague better and the Czech Republic better. And with the hope that you feel more at home in, in the Czech Republic. So as you've heard, in addition to um, your program, there's a lot of extracurricular activities. Um, the speaker series that Alexa just introduced um, are formulate part of Learning Plus as well. So these are opportunities really beyond the classroom environment where you can engage either with um, professionals, people who have taken a different paths to share their expertise, as Alexa mentioned, um, and there's a few further things that we offer whereby you can deepen your learning and also explore areas which perhaps aren't directly linked to your program. Um, you will have seen as we went through and introduced our programs that each one is connected to a certain area. So what that means under um, the system that we offer and we work with is that all of your modules are connected to that key subject area that you're studying. So the Learning Plus initiative is an opportunity for you to share in practice and meet other students from different schools uh, to share ideas, and also for you to perhaps deepen and strengthen your learning in areas that you're not necessarily covering on your program. So we have university-wide electives. Our first course that we've been running um, this past academic year was in Prague City Architecture. Uh, this was a free course open to all students who wanted to just either learn more about their home city if they were from Prague and deepen their connection to it uh, and also for perhaps our international students or people from other cities in the Czech Republic get to know the area and perhaps see the city uh, in a different way and learn something that they wouldn't be able to uh, otherwise and there's more of these uh, electives that will be offered so think covering things such as uh, philosophy or ethics so looking at different types of uh, educational activities as well and the architecture course also was complemented by some city walks so it's another opportunity as well for you to meet other students. You can also see there that we have LinkedIn learning. Uh, this is something that some lecturers have chosen to uh, incorporate into their programs, but it's something also that all our students can sign up for. Um, it, typically that's at a cost, but for our students it's not, and you get there a wealth of subject areas to explore. So if you're in business, but you perhaps have a creative streak um, and you want to learn a specific design skill, then probably on LinkedIn Learning, there's a course that you can do to pursue that. Or similarly, 
if you're not sure that you want to kind of go down the international management route, as Alexa mentioned, at the master's level to complement your studies, but maybe that's something you're interested in. Trying out one of the uh, LinkedIn learning courses is a great way to also expand um, your horizons and think about what directions might suit you and do it in a um, you know, at your own pace, basically, in a less sort of formal setting than either as part of your qualification that you're studying with us. So th this is a great platform to have access to, um, whether you use it to sort of further your study and research in your own program, or whether you use it to actually develop skills outside of that. But the possibilities um, really are endless if you've ever logged in, because there are thousands and thousands of, of courses. So I'm sure you will find something that would be relevant for you. Um, we also offer uh, study abroad opportunities. So as we mentioned at the start, we have a very international environment at PCU, um, but we do appreciate that some students perhaps uh, who are more local want the opportunity to go abroad. And also that for some students, you know, if they, they have a thirst for travel and perhaps want to try something or somewhere different. So depending on your program of study will depend on the opportunities available. Uh, the study abroad opportunities are, you have to apply for them. And there's normally a selection process. Um, and at the moment, our, our partners are based around Europe as well. So, for example, uh, within France, uh, Portugal as well. And Alexa already mentioned that we have some conferences uh, held in, in Germany as well through a, through a partner uh, that we work with. So, as I said, depend on your program, there might be different opportunities. Um, but certainly it's something that uh, if, if that's what you're interested in, is an opportunity that's available to you. And as we set out at the start, and as you've heard, uh, as Alexa, Anna and Alice have spoken through the programs that we offer, there's a lot of professional development involved within the program. So uh, Anna cited the example specifically for our graphic design students who are set real life client briefs. This can also be true within uh, creative media production, uh, computing even as well. And particularly, uh, uh, for all of our students, we promote internship opportunities and we're constantly trying to expand on and strengthen our industry network to give our students the best opportunity to find the career path that they're looking for, but also that during their studies, they can support that. So just to give you an example, our international finance and business and accounting students recently took part in the University Management Accounting Day, which was a uh, competitive event held for over 200 students from uh, the CEE region, so locally within Europe. And there was uh, teams from over 19 different universities uh, that had to uh, come up with a business case essentially and were judged from a panel. And we were really thrilled to see that um, one of our teams uh, from the Finance and Business Accounting Programme uh, actually won out of all of the other uh, 19 universities. So these are the sorts of professional opportunities um, that we're preparing you for. And I actually think the, the result uh, of, our, of our students team placing first demonstrates that those skills also pay off. So they do come through uh, to potential employers and networks. And this is just one uh, example of the sorts of activities that you could expect um, and are present within all of the programs, actually. So if this is something that you um, know is important to you, that alongside your studies, you would like internship opportunities and to meet different um, employers, think about how to put your CV together and how to best promote yourself. This is really a key theme, I would say, throughout all of our programs um, and opportunities that we provide. This typically culminates in an annual career fair. Uh, so this is really students' opportunities to, as I say, review CV, have workshops, network, um, have interview practice and on a larger scale really hear firsthand from employers about the skills that they're looking for and learn about the opportunities available and how they can develop them if they've not had that work experience yet or indeed if they're already at that point where they're looking for opportunities you know take those through those discussions um, that take place at the career fair. And we've had many students who have gone on to find work uh, through the connections that they've made over the course of their studies with us.
So for those of you who are um, now with us on the open day, I assume you are aware that Prague City University is located in the Czech Republic, in the capital of the country Prague. Uh, Prague is a great city to live in um, with plenty of possibilities for students. And Prague City University has three locations in the city. Um, we have the main campus uh, where I'm actually right now. It is um, at Prague 2, which is a residential area, area sorry, with cafes, um, bars, restaurants, where many internationals live and you can easily get around with speaking English only. In addition um, to the main campus, um, we had art uh, and design studios at Prague uh, One, very close to the Old Town, um, uh, Old Town Center. And that's where our Bachelor Art and Design students work and, and study. Um, the third location um, is art studios in Prague Nine, um, in a former industrial area where our masters, um, masters art and design students uh, work. Um, for students who are studying with us remotely, we have a digital campus. Um, whichever way um, you will be studying with us, um, we will help you to prepare for the start of the semester. So if you're arriving in Prague, um, we have a dedicated member of student services um, who will help you to understand what you need to expect when entering the Czech Republic in terms, in terms of any requirements. Um, and for both students, for, for both new students um, on campus and in the digital campus, we organize a welcome week. Um, so during the, this um, time, you will be introduced to your designated study advisor from student services. Uh, you will get to know um, your classmates, um, your teachers, um, the neighborhood um, where you live or where the university or your campus is located. And we will simply help you um, to settle um, in Prague. You will be also introduced to um, student services, sorry, student societies um, that my colleagues mentioned already and um, student council. Um, in order to improve your experience um, here in the Czech Republic, although I said that um, in Prague too, you will get around with uh, speaking English only. Uh, we really recommend um, taking Czech language uh, classes, which uh, you can sign up for. Um, and we are also ready um, to support you with the practical tasks um, at the beginning of your stay and throughout um, your stay um, in the Czech Republic. Um, some of you might have not been in Prague yet, and that is why we would like to show you um, a short video of Prague that pictures some of the main uh, sites. And okay, I can see Alice is already preparing it. Uh, thank you. Prague is a cosmopolitan city with excellent business links and a long-standing history as a cultural hub that continues to the present day. Prague is also a vibrant university city with students coming here to study from around the world for over 650 years. You will enjoy unlimited artistic, cultural and entertainment opportunities. You can participate in a multitude of sports year-round or watch many of the world-class teams and individuals who live, train and compete here. And on the weekends and your holidays, you can use your base in Prague to travel and explore all of Europe. Business networking, cultural events, theaters, galleries, sports and so much more. Combined with your studies at Prague City University, you will have many opportunities to get practical experience in your field of studies and to start and develop your future career. You will also gain a unique perspective on the world that our outstanding international education offers. Prague City University, a British education in the heart of Europe for a global community. Thank you, Alice. So that was just a bit of taste of Prague, but if you want to see more, you have to come here and study with us. 
Um, we can move to the next slide, thanks. Um, so I will talk a little bit about um, the accommodation options. Um, we work with a number of student um, residencies and, and accommodation platforms. Um, the demand for accommodation in Prague at the moment is quite high, and that is why we recommend arranging your accommodation on time. Um, so you can see on the screen a list of providers um, that we uh, cooperate with. Um, for students who need a visa, we do recommend staying in a student residence rather than in a private uh, apartment. Um, there is a student house footage resident or site from residence that we work with. Um, student house footage offers um, twin rooms uh, with a shared or private bathroom. And the price is um, 350 euros or 390 euros, depending uh, on the type of uh, the room you choose. And this price, this is the rent um, per month. Um, the student resident site room has slightly higher prices, starting from uh, 430 euros. Um, they are offering uh, twin, twin rooms as well as a limited number um, of single rooms. Um, and for students who do not need a visa, um, we have a couple more options, um, such as um, the FIS, or uh, studio room flat platforms. Um, that both of um, both of both of these providers offer private uh, apartments and flat share um, in Prague, and the price would depend actually on the location and the type of the ap apartment uh, you choose. Um, if you're interested um, in booking um, an accommodation in Prague with our help, uh, you can indicate this in the application form when you are applying to study with us. And uh, please um, do not forget that uh, places, places are limited, so um, you should get in touch um, soon. So if you already chosen your program and are ready to join our university, the first step would be to uh, apply and submit the required documents. So these are the confirmation of completed education, a diploma and transcripts in English. Then there is proof of English. We accept um, IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge or Duolingo English tests. There is a letter of motivation, 300 words minimum for the bachelor's level undergraduate and 500 if you're applying for a master's degree. Then there is a copy of your passport, a portfolio, which you would need to submit if you chose one of the programs in the School of Art and Design. Um, and also there are CV and uh, letters of recommendations if you apply for a master's program. If everything meets our requirements, we will arrange a final interview with the program leader. And if this is successful, we will send you an offer to study. Um, here you can see our tuition fees. This information can also be found on our website. Uh, we do not have application uh, fees and we offer partial scholarships. We offer two types, uh, the academic excellence one and the social engagement one. The academic excellence scholarship is mostly suitable for students who did really well in the classroom. And the social engagement um, scholarship is mo mostly suitable for students who did really well outside of the classroom and please note that we would only um, ask you to make your first payment only when the offer to study is signed here you can see our admission deadlines for international students, both the February 2022 and September 2022 intakes are available, however, with the uh, February 2022 um, intake, uh, you would study in the digital campus first until your visa is granted. Uh, with the September 2022, there is still time to apply um, and relocate the next um, Deadline is 28th of February 2022. Um, there are other deadlines, of course, as you can see, but we do recommend applying as early um, as possible because there are also benefits that you can um, 
receive if you apply early. Right here, you can see our admission deadlines for EU local and blended learning students, both again, February 2022 and September 2022 um, intakes are available and there is still time, as you can see, um, to apply and uh, some benefits are still available. Thank you, Alice. So as we've just mentioned, our applications are still open for both the upcoming February semester and of course, September 2022 entry as well. So we'd just like to spend um, the, the closing moments really of our presentation, just talking a little bit about our, our teaching plans and of course the response uh, to the pandemic and how we've been teaching over this time period. So uh, as Alice mentioned, if you haven't yet applied to study with us, but you would like to start as soon as possible, uh, and you have completed your previous education that qualifies you for your chosen program, it is still possible to apply for February 2022 entry, both for uh, students who are already based in the Czech Republic or perhaps the EU and don't require a visa, or of course want to study uh, on one of our blended learning programs and therefore don't require a visa. Um, but should you wish to uh, join us and you are an international student, then at this stage, you should expect to study um, in the digital campus for at least the first part uh, of your of your program. So you've heard us mention the digital campus uh, through throughout this presentation. Just a little bit more background on that was uh, when, of course, in uh, 2020, we had to deliver classes uh, online. We transitioned smoothly without a single day of classes actually being uh, missed. And all our students were obviously studying uh, through the online uh, platform known as our digital campus. This has um, continue to be in place for students who either due to uh, visa reasons, travel restrictions, or possibly health reasons, um, have not yet been able to join us in Prague. But I am pleased to say that since the 2021-2022 uh, academic year, we have welcomed students back onto campus, and we do intend for our February and next September semesters to continue with delivery of face-to-face -face teaching for as long uh, as that's permitted by sort of government restrictions and the indications at, at the moment are uh, that that face-to-face -face teaching uh, will will continue and will be permitted so that is what we're planning for uh, at this time as mentioned um should there still be students though who um want to apply and can't get here yet then that opportunity to start in the digital campus is still available um, there will be other students who are joining us this February uh, remotely, as well as students who will be joining us here in Prague. Uh, based on your programme of study and um, based on the situation of all of your classmates, that will determine exactly how uh, teaching is delivered. So obviously, if all of your classmates are here in Prague, you can expect full face-to-face -face teaching. Um, if it's a mixture, then that might mean that you're in a group with um, your fellow classmates in Prague only, or it might be that we deliver hybrid teaching, which means that you still come to class, uh, but on the screen there, you would see your other fellow classmates who are currently working remotely. Or of course, if everybody in that specific group and program uh, cannot be in Prague yet, or there are uh, genuine reasons why you couldn't come onto campus at this time, then you should expect delivery through the digital campus. So it's very much uh, will depend on your program and, the situation, of course, of your fellow classmates, but where possible, uh, we are delivering face-to-face -face teaching for those programs that are designed uh, for that in-person delivery. And indeed, our activities, as you heard, that which are extracurricular, uh, they've also been offered through hybrid pro uh, through hybrid um, delivery. So, for example, our societies, uh, some societies meet online, some may meet in person, some may meet hybrid, but the same opportunities are available to all students. Um, so we really are uh, one community, regardless of at the moment where people are currently studying. It's important to note as well that if you are an international student, that visa applications are open and the Czech Republic continues to welcome students from overseas, uh, as well, of course, from other EU countries too. So if you would be relocating, uh, that's very much possible. Just contact us to discuss what your individual situation is and we can advise um, which semester would suit you and how you should expect to start your studies based on uh, when you are considering starting. 
For those students who are indeed um, on campus, we do of course have health measures uh, in place to make the environment as safe as possible for students, staff and lecturers alike. So masks are worn throughout all of the common spaces. We have um, air uh, fil filtration systems in place in the classrooms uh, as well. Uh, to increase and improve ventilation of the air quality too. Um, and we do actually have a policy of checking for vaccination status or a, a negative test result before uh, entering the campus as well to try and ensure that the space um, is as safe as possible for everybody. And of course, we're abiding by uh, any government directors as and when uh, they are announced. So that's the situation. So I think the, the main message to take away for you is if you're considering in February, it will very much be dependent on the individual situation. So we'd recommend you to get in touch with us, um, especially as our semester actually starts on the 21st of February with Welcome Week taking place the week before on the 14th. So, so there's still around six weeks before um, classes officially start, which is enough time to enroll um, because the admission process that Alice so kindly explained can all be completed online. And depending on how quickly you can gather your documents, we can usually set up that interview within a one week period between you and the programme leader uh, from the date we receive your um, application. So there's very much still time. And then for next September, as you heard, um, the next upcoming deadline is the end of February, uh, which would bring with you those benefits. And again, if you're interested in the accommodation, as Anna explained, we do recommend you to apply early. So there, that's the situation um, at the moment. We do also have a dedicated health and well-being coordinator, uh, which Anna mentioned uh, would be in touch with you if you were planning your arrival. Uh, to Prague, but they're also there and available to just answer any questions uh, whilst on campus and to keep you informed of what uh, the current uh, measures are uh, across the city. But just to say that at, at the moment, Prague, um, as I said, it is still open for uh, travellers, for people to, to enter the country, and indeed um, services are, are also uh, open, even if requiring, uh, in some instances, uh, va vaccination status and so on. But things do remain uh, open at this time. So I'd just really like to take this opportunity uh, to thank you all for taking time out of your afternoon to join us. Uh, we hope you found the presentation informative. If you do have further questions, we have a little bit of time to take those uh, now. So if anything has come up, please let us know and we'd be happy to address those. Um, of course, if you've got individual questions or you would now like to have a, a, a call with uh, one of us here, uh, you're with your admissions advisor, then you can write to us over email. You can see our email on the screen there, uh, or you can contact us individually if you're already in touch and we would be happy to set up uh, a personal call with you or answer any questions over email. And of course, if you're ready to apply, then just simply write to us at that address with your chosen program uh, and your start semester. And we would be very happy to send you over the application package uh, and assist you moving forward from there. So once again, thank you for joining us. We'll just wait a, a couple of moments to see uh, if any questions uh, do arise, but I'd like to just thank uh, Alice, Anna and Alexa for uh, explaining and introducing our university to you. Uh, it's also worth saying as well, you've obviously heard uh, our perspective here today, but there's also lots of uh, videos that you can find or follow us on social media to see more insight from our students themselves. And if you are interested in actually uh, connecting with one of our students or, for example, uh, attending one of our, our classes, then this is something that you can also do as well. Uh, we are just about to come up to the semester break. Uh, as I mentioned, our February semester will be starting on the 21st of February. So at the moment, students are busy uh, working on assignments and getting ready for submissions. But nonetheless, we could definitely arrange a call for you with a current student. And uh, if you are local in Prague, to Prague or want to come and uh, visit the campus, this is also possible. We do have an open day on the uh, 5th of February uh, for people who could potentially join us in person. Otherwise, please do take a look uh, at our website there for further details, uh, information and more videos that could give you further insight. We would be very happy to hear from you, answer your questions, connect you with a student and plan a class visit if that's something that you might be interested in in the future. So 
once again, thank you so much for attending. It's been very nice to have uh, so many of you with us here this evening. Uh, I'm no doubt joining us from, from all over the world, and we really hope to hear from you and be able to meet you one day here in Prague. So thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.